No! Please! Just kill me already! I'm serious! Grab a machete and cut my ears off! I won't survive another story about some traveler having a dream about a girl surrounded by monsters. I've had it a hundred times. Once more and I'll die of boredom. I swear. You're exaggerating, Thomas. I like listening to it. It's a very good story, my boy. One with a moral. Even if it's the best story with the best moral, I'm going for a walk. I'll come back when you're finished with this nonsense. I can tell you a different story. This city is full of tales. But I don't want to hear any. I'm too old for this, Grandpa. Bye. Don't go. It'll be getting dark soon. I'll be okay. A short walk before bed won't hurt me. I'll head back when I hear the bell. And if you can hear it? Seriously? Do you really think I won't be able to hear a bell that waits to tones? That new bell ringer strikes it so hard that sometimes I need to cover my ears. I feel like the monsters aren't leaving their hideouts because the night is coming, but because the dumb bell wakes them up. That's true. I always cover my ears when I hear it. The ringing has to be loud so that everyone in the city knows it's almost sunset and the hungry monsters are about to pour out onto the streets. When that happens, it's better to stay within the light of a UV lamp like we are doing now. We know that, Grandpa. Anyway, leave me some of that magical soup. I'll be hungry when I'm back. Grandpa, why did you say that Thomas might not hear the bell? Because the bell may not ring. Oh, come on, Grandpa. There was never ever a time when the bell wouldn't ring. It always rings. It always rings. But one time, it was late. No. Hmm. One time, the bell ringer was seven minutes late. Several families were still in the fields. They didn't make it back home before the monsters came. That one slip-up cost us 16 lives. I've never heard that tale. Because it's not a tale. It happened. When? You were maybe two years old, and Greta hadn't been born yet. We had this old bell ringer named Dedrick. He never told us his surname, so we just put Dedrick the bell ringer on his gravestone. He was old but tough. Every day, he would climb those tiny stairs all the way up and strike the bell like he was no more than 20. Back then, I believe our bell was even louder than it is now. And that one day, why didn't he ring on time? That's not a story for children. But maybe Thomas is right. Maybe kids have to grow up faster these days. Should I tell you a story for grown-ups? What do you think? It's about time you did. I don't care, Grandpa. I have nightmares anyway. Okay, then. Dedrick was a very diligent bell ringer. He would leave for work long before sunset, and he'd always ring the bell on time. He'd spend several nights in the tower, then he'd come back. We didn't know much about him. As you can tell, people here are rather reluctant to share their stories. No one wants to revisit the days before the apocalypse. We only knew two things that he fled from the Netherlands, and that he had a daughter. The rest was just rumors and speculations. They said his daughter had been kidnapped by bandits and was held somewhere in the city. I'll spare you the reasons for her kidnapping. You're far too young to hear that part of the story. We are not. Trust me, you are. People are capable of doing things far worse than the monsters do. Who touched that? That's mine. Anyone touches my food again, I'll kill you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. But back to Dedrick. He volunteered to be the bell ringer because he could see the whole city from the tower. He hoped to find his daughter that way. And one day, he did. Wow, what a great story. Now hold your horses. I'm not so sure about it. He saw her about to be hanged by the peacekeepers. 
They probably took her for one of the bandits and sentenced her to death without a trial. Her father stood in the tiny window at the top of the tower and watched his only child die. He couldn't do anything. He could. He could ring the bell. He could pretend that the night was coming. They would stop the execution and seek shelter. Maybe he'd save her. Maybe. The best ideas always come too late. What happened to him? That Dedrick? What a tragedy. That sight must have haunted him for the rest of his days. You could say so. He watched as the hangman prepared the robe and secured the noose, put it around the girl's neck, then threw the robe over the gallows and crack. He watched his daughter hang in the air. They say he mimicked the hangman's every move with the bell rope. He witnessed enough executions to know how victims jerk widely before they die. He knew he would make the bell ring. He waited. Then he hanged himself at the same moment they hanged his daughter. They died together. That's why the bell rang later than usual. Thanks, Grandpa. I think I'm going to have a new nightmare tonight, for a change. Are you still going for a walk, Thomas? I don't know. What if the bell doesn't ring? Since that day, there have always been two bell ringers in the tower, in case anything happened to one of them. Good idea. Stay with us, Thomas. Maybe tomorrow we can go for a walk together, the three of us. What do you say? Yes. Okay, Grandpa. Maybe we could take Esther too? The new bell ringer's daughter. The bell ringer's daughter? I'm not so sure.